Okay, so I'm here today to show you a little bit about what is entailed when you have an energy audit done through the screen energy. Uh, the first uh, parts of it, or the most important, is the walk around the house, really. Uh, what that does is we assess what the windows are on the house, the openings uh, for the windows, the crawl space, if there is one, uh, the basement, um, what is the ventilation system on the house, meaning how much air is coming in. So it tells us like the building calculation loads for the ridge vent, uh, ventilation in the crawl, or in the basement, uh, to get a general idea whether or not uh, water is recessing away from the house, uh, it shows us possible issues that we can see with the naked eye. So the most important thing that we can have in the beginning is really our digital camera. Uh, we take the digital camera, we walk it around, uh, basically take pictures of the entire building. Uh, we then use our paperwork to diagram what the actual building is that will be in your audit report. I've set up some basic tools here that uh, we use in all of our energy audits. Uh, this kind of helps the consumer understand what's actually happening. Uh, they're basically tools that help us with data analysis to let us know what's really happening with the house. Uh, different tools for measure, obviously tape measure, um, a measure to measure the building size, uh, calculate if it's an attached garage, detached garage, uh, area square footage um, in different areas. Uh, more importantly, uh, just a couple basic things. Uh, thermal imaging, very important to have. Um, what this tells us is areas like uh, where possible or potential water leaks or mold can be. It also tells us um, what the insulation levels within the house are. Um, the software that is in this uh, is actually directly connected to it, things like uh, iPads. So when we pull up information, we can simply pull up the images through the customer's house, we can find things like what what we actually just saw, potential air leakage. Uh, this is prior to any blower door. The big red funny looking door that you're looking at, looking at here is what's called a, a blower door. What this does is once the building is put in the condition it needs to be put in, which is all the windows closed uh, to the exterior of the home, um, uh, exhaust ventilation going, which is bathrooms, attics, we inspect all that. Uh, we actually depressurize the house. So what you're actually looking at is a pool to actually depressurize the house. Um, again, we have the hard hat, the flashlights, those are all necessary to go into the attic space or crawl spaces, which we often see. And again, the thermal imaging helps us detect simple things like mold because of the air quality uh, issues within each home. Uh, we take a look at all these different factors and how they work together so we can kind of uh, take a look and see what you're breathing, what the air quality within the house is, what it should be, uh, what levels are, are, are we able to bring it to, as well as the insulation levels, uh, what can possibly be done to retrofit or fix this home. One of the most important things that I uh, like to look at is what is the uh, air conditioning vent. Um, we also inspect the gas lines to make sure that there's no gas leak um, on the home that's required in all of our inspections. But on top of that, I'd like to look at what is actually going on with the air conditioning unit if they do have an air conditioning unit on the outside of the house. Uh, as you can see, that this one is pretty mangled <laughs> in the corners here. I also look at the refrigerator part, and I actually want to see if it's insulated or not insulated. Uh, another common thing that I see is that the, the insulation around the line itself is completely deteriorating and uh, removed from the unit uh, and it wouldn't pass inspection anyway. So it's a really easy fix. That's one thing we like to point out to people. And that's also why it's so important to do a walk around to tell what the elevation on each side of the house is, where is possible ventilation. Again, that's very important if anyone considers insulation. They have to take a look at what, how much air is actually taking into the house Insulation does not work on its own. We have to have that arranged. So we'd like to take a look at that. And then it gives us clues into the foundation of the house also. This is where we look at what is going on with the thermos. Uh, we have to examine things like uh, is it venting properly before we depressurize the house? Um, is there any gas leaks at all? That's obviously very important. Um, what does the duct situation look like? Where is it, where is it distrib uh, distributing heat? Uh, where is the disbursement? How are the connection points? Uh, this helps us understand uh, what the energy load the house can count, 
what we can calculate for a sufficient um, energy efficiency load. It also tells us where basic lakes are. This is the pretty much one of the easiest areas to detect lakes because usually you can find them like within climate lungs or in areas like this, or I can just kind of put my hand against this and watch the cobwebs move. So I know that um, a lot of the connecting points here are leaking. The other thing that we need to look at is we need to look at the hot water tanks. In this case, in this particular house, uh, one hot water tank is completely insulated and blanketed. It actually has two hot water tanks, which tells me that they, I, either they really use a lot of hot water or they probably did this because the hot water that they were pumping wasn't stamped insulated. So um, real simple stuff like uh, looking at the lines on the hot water tank tells me that these are uninsulated pipes. They, this customer would easily benefit through a consumer's energy program or DT program that actually provides the insulation for free for the pipes. Um, so these are these are the things that we recommend or services that are offered when an energy audit is actually performed. Uh, but when it's again uh, checking the furnace filter, making sure there 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 is no cause for concern in terms of gas leaks. That's one of the largest things. Make sure that uh, the hot water tanks are heating and combusting at the level that they're supposed to. Um, if there's no possibility, the ventilation that is happening in areas like over the, you know, the dryer here is properly vented out with the correct vent pipe, um, looking for the same thing in this, and then of course looking for the design uh, of the actual heating system or cooling system because that can tell us, you know, is it leaking at the band joist? Is it leaking um, just through our eyes before we do the actual depressure insulation of the house? Which is going to show us all of the air leaks anyway. But this is more of a, a physical, we get our bearings uh, type situation so that we can understand and then communicate what's going on to the consumer. Okay, so we're upstairs in the attic now. Um, what we start to look for is in this case this attic has uh, the air conditioning ducts are actually running upstairs um, the attic itself lacks uh, really any form of ventilation it has a ridge vent at the top so basically we inspect what the insulation level is on the ground we inspect what the duct system in this particular case and why the homeowner is losing so much air conditioning um, these pipes themselves are actually uh, wet moist, they're sweating, they're condensating uh, because of the extreme heat difference, meaning that the, the cold is coming through the ducts, is leaking, which means that their cooling is actually cooling some of their attic, and the attic itself is extremely hot at about uh, today, a day like today, the attic is reading 107 degrees. So when we look at this, we try to take into account what's actually happening in the attic, is there mold, because that's actually one of the most common things we find in these homes is a um, uh, uh, propensity for mold, uh, mildew, and a lot of that is just improper installation of insulation itself, which means they blanketed the attic like they did in this case with insulation, and they never provided air intake uh, properly. Uh, so in this case, you wouldn't put any insulation in this attic before um, adding adequate ventilation because you would have a more serious mold problem than you already have. Okay, so we're back downstairs. It was super hot up there. Um, I'm still kind of feeling it. I probably should have worn a respirator. Normally I do, but I saw that there was cellulose up there. That's the other reason we go in the attic is to see what's actually inside the house. What did they use? Is there vermiculite? Is there cellulose? Did they use fiberglass? Which type did they use? What's the R value? Um, anyway, so we're back down here. So now what we do is I'm looking at some of the images taken from the house in air leakage through thermal imaging and uh, we hook up the blower door, which is already set in this door frame. Uh, what this is going to do is, uh, if the house is set in the condition it's supposed to be set in, which means that all windows are closed, doors are closed except for this one, we're going to turn this machine on. Um, I do this actually computerized because it's much easier. Um, we turn the machine on. What the machine's going to do then is going to create a huge vacuum. The vacuum is going to pull all of the air potentially out of the house. What that's going to do at the end, it's going to read a certain number of pascals. Um, it's going to actually tell me what my air pressure is inside to the outside. But the reason that that's important is it will show me all leaks and pathways that uh, are going to occur in the house. It shows me interstitial airflow, which thermal imaging also does this. This gives a data analysis of it, though, and it kind of works like this. So basically what you do is you turn the device on. Um, rather than spending all of the time calibrating and calculating this, 
We have a reference point to the outside, um, and basically our goal is to see how much air we can pull out of the house. We want this to occur within a minute's time, generally speaking. So the energy audit is now completed. Uh, what's left now is for us to go back to the office to run all of the data into Mishcon consumers and DTE software or Beacon software. It gives us a data analysis of what needs to be done in the house and then we present that to the customer. Usually the report is about 9 to 10 pages long. It details everything from uh, what they should do, expect in terms of insulation, uh, what they should expect in terms of ventilation, what the air quality levels are on the house, um, mold, mildew, um, any of that is covered. Uh, we do this because any of the audits that are performed for us are uh, receive federal uh, and state and your local utilities uh, rebates for doing the work. So it has to be a certified audit uh, and that's what makes us a certified audit is the tools that we use, the software that we use, the certifications that we hold as national auditors on commercial as well as residential, building envelope professionals, um, and air quality specialists. So that's the end of our day today. I'm on my way back to the office to see uh, what the data shows.